Hello there, you're watching L24 Midnight News coming to you live from Algiers and to the headlines. Algeria condemns Morocco's strategy to destabilize the countries of the region through drug trafficking, describing it as a weapon of mass destruction and concern for international peace and security. In Africa, still, energy companies agree to activate a joint bank to finance a structural continental project with an opening capital of $5 billion. And in the European continent, Madrid's parliament begins discussions of withdrawing confidence from Pedro Sanchez's government and opposition parties call for early general elections. And as they met for the second day in Moscow, Chinese President Xi and his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin stress that talks will be the only means of resolving the Ukraine crisis. Hello again and welcome, I'm your host, Abdurrahim Kashur and those were today's top stories. First, Algeria's permanent representative to the United Nations in Vienna, Fauzia Boumiz Ambarki denounced the strategy pers persuaded by Morocco by destabilizing Algeria and the countries of the region through the drug trafficking, warning the international community of the dangerous consequences of these practices on the population. In her speech in the 66th session of the United Nations Commission on Narcotic Drugs, which took place in Vienna, the Algerian ambassador described the annual increase in the quantities of drugs coming from Morocco as weapons of mass destruction. After this trade emerged from the framework of transitional organized crime, at a time when all international numbers and reports place Morocco as the world's first producer of cannabis and a major transit country for other type of drugs, the Moroccan regime's intentions are expanding more in flooding the countries of the region with those toxins, a strategy pursued by the royal palace aimed at destabilizing the countries of the region through drugs. Morocco is the world's largest producer of cannabis. It has become the country of transit par excellence for other drugs. Other neighboring countries are also suffering from this search, which proves that there is a real strategy to destabilize the country by targeting its youth. Unfortunately, every year there is an increase in the quantities of drugs from Morocco. Morocco is the top of the list of the countries flooded with drugs in Africa and Europe. The international community stressed the need to intensify efforts to confront this crime, which has extended to the financing of cross-border crime, corruption, human trafficking, money laundering and financing of terrorism. The analysis laboratories have established that the cannabis from Morocco had a high level of Delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol at 49.5%. In addition, the means used on the Moroccan side to make the offer attractive by proposing delayed payment, that is to say, paying for the goods, only once sold, a process which demonstrates how this trade has gone beyond the framework of transitional organized crime to become a weapon of mass destruction. Despite international warnings against the continued production and flow of cannabis and hashish in an organized and stable manner from Morocco towards neighboring countries in Europe, al mahzen regime continues its promotional policies, ignoring all international agreements to combat crime and drugs. Sahrawi President Ibrahim Ghali, Secretary General of Polisario France, met with uh, the President of the Parliamentary Friendship Group Venezuela Africa within the framework of the state visit to the Republic of Venezuela at the invitation of the country's President Nicolas Maduro. The Sahrawi cause is witnessing a growing support from the countries located in Latin America, where positions are being renewed in support of the struggle of the Sahrawi people and their right to self-determination.
The Algerian Foreign Minister Ahmed Attaf and the Turkish counterpart Mawlud Shawish Oglu expressed their satisfaction on the Algerian-Turkish relations and the dynamism that distinguish the two countries in light of the constant care and direct follow-up by the presidents of the two brotherly countries, whom are united by a common will to establish a comprehensive economic partnership by strengthening political coordination on all issues of common interest. This came during a phone call that Algerian Foreign Minister received from his Turkish counterpart who congratulated him on his appointment at the head of the Algerian diplomacy. According to a statement by the Algerian Foreign Ministry, the Turkish minister renewed his gratitude to Algeria for the wide solidarity donation with his country following the earthquake. Still in Algeria, the CEO of uh, hydrocarbon companies of African oil produ or producers organization member states met in Algiers to consider at activating Continental Energy Bank before the end of the current year with an initial capital of $5 billion entrusting it with the task of financing structured and integrated projects in Africa. Zara Fergeni. In order to boost African efforts to finance energy projects, African Petroleum Producing Organization is moving towards activating the African Energy Bank as a mechanism to avoid the restraints of financing conditions that often accompany granting loans to continental projects. The African Energy Bank will be provided with an initial capital of $5 billion. It is expected to be activated at the end of the current year with the task of financing oil and gas investment projects without depending on international financing bodies. We realize that the industry, the oil and gas industry, is a very expensive or capital-intensive industry. And one of the challenges of the industry today in Africa is finance. With the decision of the countries that have been financing oil and gas projects in Africa to leave funding oil and gas, Apple decided that we need to pool our resources together to establish the Africa Energy Bank. And this is a project that we plan, we hope, to see take off before the end of this year. This platform that is available to us as part of this meeting of the African Petroleum Exporting Countries Organization is for the exchange of opinions and decisions between African companies. Uh, Algeria supports the endeavor and advocates the establishment of a common financial platform that guarantees access to inter-African funds for the benefits of the countries, especially since the continent has enormous natural resources which stimulates more investment in upstream projects. We always work in this context with all African companies in order to improve performance as well as search for joint investment opportunities and develop the oil and gas industry in Africa with the efforts of African countries and companies using African funds. Energy infrastructure that are within countries. These infrastructure are going to be infrastructure whose products are going to go beyond the limits of that country but also to the neighboring countries. Africa, which owns a third of the world's wealth, aspires to achieve financial independence which makes it fight encounters of sustainable energy development without foreign conditions or restrictions and most importantly achieving African integration with African funds. The CEO of the Sonatar Group expressed Algeria's readiness to expand the training of African executives in the field of energy and all professions related to the oil and gas industry within a comprehensive and important vision of cooperation as a substance for enhancing energy security. Our mission is to facilitate the exchange of ideas and experiences between our African countries and to propose a global and comprehensive vision of solutions in order to work to improve energy security, economic diversification and sustainable development in Africa 
I would like to reaffirm our interest in implementing African projects for fruitful cooperation to ensure our social and economic development, as well as the development of our policies to protect the environment. Chairman of the Board of Directors, Masoud Suleiman Musa, head of the Libya's National Oil Co Cooperation, called on Sonatrak to resume its activities in Libya and complete its projects, describing the Algerian group as an important figure in the Libyan market. There are joint cooperation plans for Sonatrak and maintenance and training work and there are exploration parts for Sonatrak in Libya. I discussed with Mr. Tawfiq Hakkar, CEO of Sonatrak, regarding their call to lift Force Major and offers to resume Sonatrak's activities in Libya, especially after the relative security stability in Libya. Sonatrak, of course, is one of the international companies that possess expertise in technology. It has extensive experience in the oil and gas fields, and in fact, it has several production sharing agreements with the Libyan state. In Libya's State Presidential Council in Libya has welcomed the agreement between the House of Representatives and the High Council of the State on the 30th Amendment to the Constitutional Declaration as a step towards completing the elections in 2023. Abil Khazini on what follow. In a move ahead that might pave the way towards reaching a clear roadmap for the preparation of elections in Libya, the House of Representatives elected the six members of the Joint Committee 6 plus 6 with the High State Council to prepare the election laws. The move was welcomed by the Presidential Council. We welcome the plan of consensus of House of Representatives and High Council of the State on the 13th Amendment to the Constitutional Declaration as a step toward achieving the elections in 2023. We renew the call for greater participation in all matters related to the electoral process with Libyan ownership. Washington, meanwhile, announced its support for the efforts of the UN envoy to Libya, Abdullah Batili, to establish a constitutional framework and a timeline for elections in Libya this year. The U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for Near Eastern Affairs stressed the need to create all conditions for the holding of presidential and parliamentary elections. On February, the UN envoy to Libya announced a new initiative to hold elections in 2023, which includes the establishment of a high-level steering committee and the adoption of a legal framework and a binding timetable for holding the elections. For more than a decade now, Libya has known political fragmentation. The North African country is waiting for a breakthrough from the crisis. In the Middle East now, precisely Palestine, where the occupation forces on Tuesday arrested 11 Palestinians from a different areas of the occupied West Bank. This comes as several Palestinians suffocated after Zionist forces raided Al Yamun village west of the occupied West Bank city of Jenin. It is said that the occupation forces intensively fired concussion grenades and tear gas containers towards houses as well as toward a local clinic. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan officially submitted his candidacy file for the presidential elections to be held on May 14th. On Tuesday, the Turkish Justice and Development Party and the National Movement submitted President Erdogan's nomination papers to the Supreme Election Committee to run for the presidential race on the 10th of March. Erdogan announced that he had signed a presidential decree advancing the date of the presidential elections from June 18 to May 14. The Tunisian Foreign Ministry confirmed on Tuesday that the statement of European Union Foreign Policy Chief Joseph Borrell, in which he expressed the bloc's fears of Tunisia's collapse, were selective and exaggerated. The Tunisian Foreign Ministry said that the statements made were unequal both in view of well-established and historically proven capabilities of Tunisian people to endure and overcome difficulties, as well as with regard to the threat posed by migration from southern countries to Europe. So I sent a mission to Mali. We will protect our national sovereignty. And once again, we refuse any interference in our internal affairs. Because we are not under mandate, protection or under trusteeship. 
we will never abandon our sovereignty. So many martyrs and so many died and so many paid a very high price in prisons in order for Tunisia to be a free and independent country. In Spain now, Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez is facing a no-confidence vote after the opposition Fox party made a proposal that was approved by the Spanish Parliament Office. The vote is set to take place on Wednesday with historian Ramon Tamasas proposed a Sanchez successor. The no-confidence proposal was made after the Fox party fulfilled the legal conditions for its acceptance. Now, in uh, France, French President Emmanuel Macron is set to address his nation once day after the government survived two no-confidence votes Monday of an, an unpopular pension reform that sparked protests across France. Marimzian. Protests and strikes continue in the French capital, Paris, against the government's proposed pension reform to raise retirement age from 62 to 64 on the eve of a crucial televised interview of the President Emmanuel Macron. Protesters have been playing cat and mouse with police in cities across France from last week, setting bins and barricades on fire while police responded with tear gas. It's time for radicality. And yes, having masses on the streets was not enough. When there were 3.5 million of us in the streets, well, Emmanuel Macron still did not listen to what we had to tell him. So now, we have to shift to more radical means of action, especially blocking the economy. And on that, we have a part to play. I don't expect much from Macron's speech. We are holding a new day of protests on Thursday. It's going to be massive once again to say that whether he bypasses parliament vote or not, whether there is a vote of no confidence or not, we don't want this slow and we will fight until it is withdrawn. Ongoing strikes led to piles of uncollected rubbish left for days in some of Paris' most prestigious avenues shortages of fuel and transport disruption. While opposition lawmakers vowed to force a U-turn and unions prepared for a nationwide action on Thursday that could paralyze the whole country. Amidst this chaotic situation, the French leader will break his silence today in an attempt to calm public anger over his pension reform and outline plans after his administration survived the no-confidence motion in Parliament. And despite fierce opposition to the reforms, the leader said he is to keep the government in place and will not dissolve parliament. Violent unrest which has erupted across the country in recent days is leaving Macron to face the most dangerous challenge to his authority since the Yellow Vest uprising over four years ago. Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin emerged from two days of talks on Tuesday with a sincere words of friendship between China and Russia and joint criticism of the West. Morobleo. A three-day state visit by Chinese President Xi Jinping to Moscow this week was hailed by China and Russia's presidents as a result of solid and cooperative relations between the two nations and comes after a determined drive over the last decade to strengthen diplomatic defense and trade ties. With the joint efforts of both sides, China-Russia relations have always maintained a vigorous, healthy and stable development momentum. The Chinese and Russian leaders signed a joint statement on Tuesday after holding centerpiece talks in Moscow, in which they extolled Beijing's positive role, an objective and biased position on Putin's military operation in Ukraine. Of course, we did not ignore the situation around Ukraine. We believe that many of the provisions of the peace plan put forward by China are consonant with Russian approaches and can be taken as a basis for a peaceful settlement when they are ready for that in the West and in Kiev. However, so far we see no such readiness from their side. I would like to point out that in the Ukrainian settlement we consistently follow the principles of UN Charter and stand on an objective and unbiased position. We do actively promote reconciliation and resumption of talks.
In joint remarks with Xi, after the talks, Russia's president promised to supply China with at least 98 billion cubic meters of natural gas by 2023, a figure attainable only if the new pipeline comes online, and noted Mongolia had already signed off on the deal. Russian business is ready to satisfy the growing Chinese energy demands both within the current projects and those that are still being agreed upon. We've just discussed it. It's a good project, new pipeline, power of Siberia too, through Mongolia. Xi's state visit is a major boost to Putin, as he squares off against what he sees as a hostile West bent on inflicting a strategic defeat on Russia. The United States has been dismissive on the Chinese proposal given Beijing's refusal to condemn Russia over Ukraine, and says a ceasefire now would lock in Russian territorial gains and give Putin's army more time to regroup. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky said during a briefing with Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kichida that Kiev has suggested to China that Beijing join a Ukrainian peace formula to end Russia's war in Ukraine, but that it was still waiting for an answer. Beijing has proposed a 12-point peace proposal, but Kiev insists on a full Russian troops withdrawal and has been promoting its own plan in recent months. We suggested China in public as well as through diplomatic channels our peace formula, and we invited them to participate in this formula. We invite China for dialogue and wait for a response. The delivery, or rather the Pentagon, said on Tuesday that it plans to speed up the delivery of Abraham tanks to Ukraine, providing the vital equipment to Kiev as soon as this fall. In close coordination with Ukraine has made the decision to provide the M1A1 variant of the Abrams tank, which will enable us to significantly expedite delivery timelines and deliver this important capability to Ukraine by the fall of this year. It will also give Ukraine a very similar capability to the M1A2, which includes advanced armor and weapon systems to include a 120mm cannon and 50 caliber heavy machine gun. NATO Chief Jens Stoltenberg said Tuesday that China shouldn't provide lethal aid to Russia in the war and that it would be illegal support. Let's take a listen. Uh, we haven't seen any proof that uh, China is uh, delivering lethal uh, weapons to Russia. Uh, but we have uh, seen uh, some signs that uh, this has been a request uh, from Russia and that this is an issue that uh, is, cons is, is uh, considered uh, 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 in Beijing or by the Chinese authorities. And therefore our message has been that China should not provide lethal aid to, uh, to, uh, to Russia. Uh, that will be uh, uh, to support uh, an illegal war. In the seminar of thought, Stoltenberg pressed NATO allies to increase defense spending more quickly. He said that military spending objective of 2% of GDP was met by 7 out of 30 countries in 2022, one country less than in 2021, before the beginning of conflict in Ukraine. Stoltenberg did not specify which nations met the target. Please. And it shows that uh, seven allies now spend uh, 2%. Uh, uh, we actually expected that to be slightly more uh, earlier. Uh, but because GDP has increased more than expected for a couple of allies, uh, two allies that we expected to be at 2% are now slightly below 2%. The US and its allies condemned at United Nations North Korea's recent missiles drills, which violate multiple UN resolutions and jeopardize international aviation and maritime safety. US Ambassador Linda Thomas Greenfield told a council meeting that Chinese and Russian obstructionism was encouraging North Korea to launch ballistic missiles with impunity. Let's take a listen. This growing crisis threatens not only the region, but global peace and stability. Each of these launches violate multiple Security Council resolutions. These unlawful launches jeopardize the safety of maritime and aviation travel and pose a clear threat to the global nonproliferation regime. 
The International Monetary Fund said Tuesday that it is assessing Sri Lanka's governance in the first case of Asian country facing inspection for corruption as part of bailout program. Colombo, for its part, says it is ready to engage in debt restricting talks with bilateral and private creditors. The IMF approved a nearly $3 billion bailout plan for the bankrupt nation Monday and about 333 million walls to be distributed immediately to ease the country's humanitarian crisis. We will uh, engage with our creditors and we have established uh, transparency, confidence uh, among the creditors. So I think uh, from the government's point, this was a very crucial approval for us and was a much needed approval to, uh, to unlock the program. So this unlocking will uh, result us having access to approximately uh, 7 billion US dollars uh, from the IMF as well as from the IFIs. So uh, we are confident that you know, we will uh, march forward. So this and ladies and gentlemen, thank you ever so much for being with us. For more updates, come from our social media platform. All I can say for now, good night.